ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the uh, Sri Lanka video series of Crusader Kings 3 here on the Lord Master channel, in which we have a new Agarada, as the old one has passed on. This is Agarada Gajabahu of the Vijayabahu Agarajiya, in which he is our most virtuous Buddhist ruler we have for now, because he is honest, he is calm, which is both virtuous. If only patient was a virtue, perhaps in some other face, but not this. Which one would think that he would be well qualified to be a Buddhist monk himself, but however he must serve as the Agarada of Tambapani. Even though during his youth and during his years as prince he was known to be uh, disloyal. In which is not quite honest like, so he's a slightly contradictory man, but there is one thing we cannot deny about him. He has an excellent education in stewardship, which one would think this would lead us to an era of prosperity here on Tambapani. And we look to when we hope that it will be so. But however, um, and of course, his father, Vikramabahu, who has passed at the age of 73, as he died, count written it. He was a paragon, an example of religious virtue. Now all of us, everyone who is a member of the Vijayabahu dynasty and house, will have consecrated blood. So those zealot vassals um, will respect us more. As the unwavering devotion shown by some of its members have given this dynasty an impeccable reputation in the eyes of the priesthood. So he's 28 years old. Um, he'll be turning 29 later this year. But there are first couple of things here. Since my rule has just begun, we have some business to take care of. First things first. Get the council together. Who wants to be part of the council? I know some of them have their unpopular opinion towards me, but do not worry, you'll get your positions. Mogalana will be the Mahasandavigahi, the Chancellor. Tegasumakadinga, who is a Arsinavarad Marshal. My uncle and royal architect. The Castle Builder, they call him. He's renowned for his knowledge of how to build sturdy and reliable castles, or Dugas in this case. Yeah, I'll go. By the way, okay, I was just wondering what page are you? Mahavihara. Okay. My uncle Vikrama is a Badakaria steward. Last said, poor nurse, by master. Avirada as the Rahasadavikulava. We've been developing the heck out of this place until. Um, I mean, it's starting to slow down a little with the development, but we can. We could keep it going. There are ways to develop it. And of course, you gotta align with the Sri Lankan monastery. And I will continue my father's tradition, and this will be the Sri Lankan monastery that we will always align with. And that will be the Mahavihara, which is, again, as a reminder, the traditionalists' Mahavihara, which which again, the Mahavihara were the more traditional monastery or sect of ancient and medieval Sri Lankan Buddhism. They were typically skeptical or dismissive of what they saw as heterodox ideas from India. According to the traditional chronicles, they were the ones who won out in the end against the other monasteries. So I thought for the rest of this playthrough, stick with Mahavihara. Let's do it the historical way. I would never align with the Abayagiri, which they originally started as the most prominent monastery, but even though it is tempting to see that it can improve development growth. Jedavana helped us out at the beginning, 
because of the rebuilding the island of Tambapani as it is now. But I plan on going to university very soon, so it would be wise to be a patron of Mahavihara because of the learning skill and the monthly lifestyle experience. So we shall support the Mahavihara. And that's not all. Get to support the Sangha again. Don't overspend too much, alright? Part of Anna Scrolls, that's for lifestyle. Oh, hold on there. You forgot to pick this. Ah, uh, you know, since they call me Minus Touch, and I do envision a golden age for Tamapani, I would rather reset the perks because, as nice as this does regarding direct vassal opinion and counselor opinion, I would rather switch towards Well Focus, reset the perks, which would almost go to the max. <laughs> oh so, yeah, it's very, very tempting to be distressed very early on in this part of the series. This early part of the reign. I said very tempting to do that. Vassal tax contributions always good. Republican vassal tax contributed, as in mayors. In case if I do get stressed, that would be the perk to pick up. But please remember, I am a calm man. It's easier for me to lose stress. Even over time, I will lose stress faster. I'm a patient man also. Now support the Sangha. Out of Venice schools. Further increasing the prominence. And of course, reinforce relations with the Silk Road communities. As I said, I plan on going to university soon, so I'd like to pick up some learning more and more. Because it may help out for me here. And there is one option. Indian. <laughs> the monks, thinkers, and worldly merchants hail from India and certainly left a positive mark on the cultures and societies of any land they child to. Now perhaps your lines too. This is just plus one learning. Do some networking here. The lands and seas of the so-called Silk Road have been a vibrant melting pot of different peoples for generations, perhaps even before the rise of great empires of Han, Rome, or Persia. Thanks to these extensive networks, there are flourishing communities of foragers from across Eurasia, even in my realm. Cooperating with them may be helpful if I to achieve my ambitions. In particular, I decided to reinforce relations with the Indian communities in my realm. The Indian subcontinent is renowned for the many good things that come out of it. From inspiring faiths followed by many, to intricate and skillful art styles, to wealthy networks of traders, and much more. Yes. So, again, with context, the Indian communities this increases the amount of chances of receiving gifts of piety or of character modifiers that improve lifestyle experience. It can unlock the decision to bring in Indian artisans, which will do that right now. Where are you? Here you are. Now that I've been networking with the local Indian communities in my room, it has occurred to me that I could use my new connections to hire some Indian artisans from afar to work for me. The art style from the subcontinent has been a major influence on many civilizations, and utilizing it will undoubtedly raise my prestige. In the next ten years, these Indic artisans... Huh. It's actually plus one diplomacy while you gain piety. It helps with the monthly court grandeur change, and also lessens the artifact decay reduction. That's good. Their beautiful heart will have a good home here. India is home to many cultures and faiths that have influenced many parts of the world. It is no surprise that Indian art styles are spread throughout the Silk Road, both through incorporation of their artistic techniques and conventions. 
and through in, in, immigration of skilled Indian artisans into other regions. Within the local Indian community, for example, our number of skilled artisans. Though it took some effort, I was able to persuade them to work for me, and I have various projects in mind where I think their skills will be most valuable. What majesty, splendor, and divinity these artisans can create. Again, like to be in a university. Because don't you remember how this costs? No cost to do it here. To the max. Library knowledge. What you get? Increased activity, success, progress, illustrious book artifact, and a random skill point. And hopefully a chance to improve the uh, tier of... The tier of... Um, there's words for it. It only costs 300. Okay, fair enough. That's just wondering, it's like, is there anything else I could do before you even implement that? I'm a thinking. Ah, yes. Because ever since we made even more progress towards the accumulation phase, which will be so far away from degeneration, I'm going to do something that I'll be willing to get away with. This is fairly expensive. Pray to the Sri Lanka's guardian deities. This is going to hurt the prominence of all the monasteries, but trust me, I'll make an investment that may be worth it. It's going to help me. I guess it's Nanta here for learning. And not to mention less stress gain. Well, you should have done that earlier before you reset the perks. <laughs> so, that's plus one learning here. That we shall worship Nanta, the god in the heavens who wishes to save all. Prepare offerings of milk rice. I decided to host a Theravada prayer ceremony to ask for divine aid. The singing of ceremonial songs fills the whole temple as you worship one of the great guardian deities of Tambapani, Nanta. He bears on his right hand a gem-studded pot, observing the signs from Tusita heaven, emerging like a moon through a cloud from the southern gate and a rise of floral arch. Being in charge of the lower and Kalenia city of Lanka, subduing evil spirits through his glorious powers, having attained the permission to become a Buddha in a future age, the great jewel Nanta God is arriving from heaven. May our prayers be answered. Again, here's the context that this event text features an excerpt from a religious song recorded by the Sinhala scholar and writer W.A. De Silva in 1920 about the deity Nanta. He is a Sri Lankan uh, version of uh, Avalokitesvara, one of the most popular Buddhist bodhisattvas or deities who takes on many forms and variations such as the Chinese goddess of mercy Guan Yin. Despite his origins as a regional version of Avalokitesvara, Nanta is now often associated with Maitreya, who is said to be the next Buddha to come. I said, yeah, praise be answered. And wish me luck for my studies. It's good enough. As I said, go luck. Hopefully we'll upgrade this education trait. Because I'd like to study hard. Spending nearly all the money for this. But it'll be all worth it. And then after we finish those studies, I will look to doing all other things. And of course, the Grand Taxation Tour. Since we did not do it the, prior to the end of our Aga, previous Agarada's reign. I'll be sure to do that. Let's begin. Now remember, I have no spouse to support me. And 
would be good to get a couple of perks that relates to stewardship so I could be avaricious. As I said, I could see a golden era that is to come that I envision in my mind. Right there. You want to be on the Tambapani throne. You got allies? Oh, they're all in this together. I could send. Aha! I know what to send them. This. We gain renown together, since you are a fellow member of the Vijaya Bahu dynasty. Passed over for regent. Short reign, of course. Taking advantage of me, have you? Don't be alarmed. There's also a Vijay Bahu. As I said, you want to be the Agarada? Well, be careful what you wish for. Remember, ultimate is 17 months. And another wants a liberty faction to lower the crown authority. Fair enough. Seven months study. Ah, yes. Dilfman swear failed. In the honor of the traditions of House of J. Bahu and my predecessor, my vassals have traveled across the land to affirm their loyalty. Uh, with the oath of fealty, I vow that you will have my protection. The Pura Pandana of Trincomali, the, my fellow vassal from Vani, and from Yakala, that's local here. That can't be good because that's these are baronies, two of them, and only one county still supports. Now that you will have my protection. And with these strong hooks on them, they cannot form a faction against me. Now, here I am finally at the gates of, of our capital here. The renowned university seat. All knowledge is collected inside these hollow halls, and the scholars of repute from all over the world assemble these same hallways to preserve it and increase the true wealth of wisdom, and I'll soon join them. Of course, major centers of culture are also active markets and offer all the distractions the student could desire. Time to get started. These are the people here for today. Ananarian, who's Bengali. Jacob von Ebestein, who's obviously that's German culture. Siva Bandara, that's local. And then Baldwin von Nuschkate, who is uh, not a German, Swabian to be exact. There are other students here, including my caravan master, Momchilo, and my court physician, and my bodyguard, obviously. Jakob. Uh, one of, or Jakob, one of the most respected teachers here in. It's clearly a foreigner. His, act, his accent and mannerisms betray him as a village. While not strictly necessary for my studies, learning his uh, mother tongue will foster a privileged relationship with him. It's bound to be a good investment in the future. Bavaria. Yeah, that's what that is. He's Bavarian, to be exact.
This will bring close to the magister. I could learn the German language, and I might become more, more successful at that percentage here. Paid 3% chance that I would fail to learn, them, but get the stewardship lifestyle experience, and also get stressed out. Oh boy. Because, you know, in Dark Ages, if you do get stressed, uh, there is a chance that you will die at that moment. I learned his language. Oh, I don't see what good use German language will be. Well, it's good to know that I know things. Can't do that. No longer my garden hermit. What, you wandered off? Intellectual debate. Material can normalize often home of reverent debates among teachers and students alike. After particularly enlightening lectures from our teacher Baldwin, I find myself dragged into one such debate with another student, Siva. No! You are making no sense! You're completely misrepresented philosopher's point, I screamed. You're completely delusional, he cries back. When I corner my eye, I see Baldwin stare as a pensive look at his face. Any challenge against him. Nine, and I have uh, fourteen, if I remember correctly. So, seventy-seven, sixty-seven percent chance that you'll be convinced, and uh, my university studies will get much more successful. Thirty-two percent chance that I admit that he's right, and I'll form closer to the rivalry with him. He bested me. I wrote a little poem. A cat hunts for mice and myself for knowledge. Based on assignment. There you go. Tier 1. Gain lifestyle experience. Low chance of upgrading my education tree. I haggled in the markets here and gained 40 gold and a stewardship lifestyle up. Tiruna Guy is a renowned center of studies that hosts both teachers and students from far and near. I hardly had uh, thought much of it until today when a religious reference to Baldwin struck me hard as blasphemous and contrary to everything I've been told in my life. It revealed him as a Catholic, an actual infidel. I don't know how I feel about it. I don't care as long as uh, he has something to teach. He's teaching about stewardship. So, much more successful for the university studies. I guess all that fractionalism talk here has calmed down. Halls of the university often echoes the debates of students and teachers, some of which escalates into notorious rivals, like between Jacob and Baldwin, the two Germans. What I find with the day is usual screaming at each other, trying to prove whose field of study is better equipped to discuss theoretical knowledge and um, observational, observational, observational studies in Ayurvedic medicine. Sounding less than usual, however, as a son knows me, unfortunately, asking me to take a position. Well, who likes me more? Or neither of you? I 
I can respect that to your taste, if you should. This man, however, he's deceitful, lazy, and impatient. Baldwin pursues the worthiest knowledge. I say that because I am an honest. Spent the night pouring over books. Again. Yes. If I do get stressed, at least there'll be more monthly income. Hopefully, pick up another perk soon. Teaching here takes place for the most part in all form, and students are encouraged to exercise their Rhetorical prowess to show the progress of their learning and debates in front of their peers and teachers. Today, Jagabadas and Pranarian to take up both sides of the topic of generals of ancient and modern times discuss it out. Let me begin from the Buddha Vakana, as everyone knows. That's our scripture. Seventy eight percent chance of my position is stronger and become much more successful to study. 22% chance I'm outmatched and become slightly more successful. And I want a debate here. Haggled in the markets here again, making a bit of gold. Universities and centers of higher education are always bustling highs of uh, socialization. In these hall of halls, students are all peers, all princes along the road to knowledge, which is why it could be helpful to make friends and feel part of a community. These are at least my first thoughts when Sue approaches me. The smell of Iraq on his breath. Join me and my friends, Gajabo. Prove to us the might of Agarada by downing more cups than anyone else, and we shall consider you one of us. No thanks. There we go, tier two. We'll pick up a perk. Medium chance to upgrade the education trait. Which is doubtful. Won't get lucky the second time like I did the first time back during the reign of Vijayabahu. Finished. This has been such an amazing experience. When I left, I can even imagine a number of wise men that study at Vijaya Rajapura. The depth of their thinking, the better their research, just being a part of the same environment made me a much better person. With my new gain knowledge, I can make my way home very satisfied. Knowledge is power. Picked up two stewardship lifestyle perks. A lot of gold was invested in buying and rare and precious books. Wasn't able to um, get the upgraded Education trait. I learned the German language during my time. Called Deutsch. And here's this book. The Fine Art of Love. A cheeky booklet uh, full of adequate advice that is granted to have all the ladies and lads fall at your feet. The cover is wood that's been painted to display a repeating image of geometric shapes. That'll be helpful. In future. Okay. Now it's these two. That we ought to worry about. But sooner or later, you all have to respect me. Two bricks. More profits here, so income while at war. And fearful troops, men at arms, maintenance for dread. Soon we'll have the ability to sell titles if we're desperate for cash. And, and then we'll get this. Won't be able to do this again until 20 years. Which I'll be 48 by that time. Which is a good age still. I 
would love to spend money to help out the Sangha, but we got a grand tour. Grand taxation tour. I was about to say, what's the matter? Oh, I see, he's uh, traveling. For what reason, exactly? Look at you, you committed adultery. Check these spiritual ways. Gonna have a ceremony. Keep an eye on it. Don't go for the grand tour yet. Oh, ancestor veneration ceremony. That's what he's doing. Cut ticket. Okay. of one of the Cholas, which is one of our former enemies, because let's hope this will be a sign of peace in our time. There we go, now it's open. Okay, here's how it's going to go. Since we'll be visiting all the vassals. Yeah. Dinner to improve relations. Well, especially dinner with you. Hopefully you don't poison me. And dinner with the kin. And of course, always go for cultural festivals to improve relations with the Tano. Obviously, quite much. But still too much. <sighs> Blast. So we can't do that right now. Guess we're gonna have to wait a while then. Oh, yeah. The new court artifact. Since you're into stewardship, you should be using books that'll help with your stewardship. Find those. Actually, don't have one of these. I could have sworn. So I had one of those. Hmm. Well, let's hold court. Maybe we could try to. Improve relations with the vassals, as well as opportunity to earn gold. Ratladu, oh, I'm very Radha. Is Ratladu approached cautiously, wary of the civil court? My lord, I'm sure someone in the Agaraji is trying to harm my Ratladu. I have no evidence, but I su suspect. Another ma, I'm Iraji. So let's see yourself as Ratladu judges the man. I beg you, a prisoner, put a stop to this madness. Malice is not a crime in itself. Plus, he's a Buddhist. He's a good man. I think Raggedy Pez stands for me. Gawking at the opulence of my throne. I was distracted. I call it his touch. Oh, I'm sorry, my lord. Uh, my village in Vijaya Rajapura was hit by a blight this year. We'd lost not only our crop, but our seed too. We have nothing. We will starve without help. Glad to go on my throne again. Yeah, sure you have wealth to spare.
Increased levy size would deter the faction from getting any more power. I think it would be wise that that if the fields are burned, you shall wield a sword. This is for defensive reasons. In case anybody tries to take advantage of me. This is for the next five years. So, if tenants enlisted to fight instead of so. Plus, it lessens the danger knowing I'll be traveling sooner or later. My uncle Vikram approaches the throne with a young man. My nephew in Agarada, he spots. My nephew Nandamita seeks the honor of serving in retinue of Radhapur. Given the opportunity to prove his quality. Nadamita smiles weakly. Though I'm only a middling swordsman, hope I can learn much in, in your service. Cousin? He has odd tastes. You do have claims. I'll say very well, you may attend a Nadavita. Didn't have to spend any money. Didn't need to. Eight years? Okay, that's definitely slowed down now. So start collecting taxes to help improve the income of the realm. We can wait a year. How much does it cost again? Around some odd. Let the time tick along. Have at least plus silk road merchants. Three hundred and sixty four is what's needed. And obviously be safe. Just for future efforts. Over 360 gold is what's needed. I know how this works. No fancy dreams. I will spare my gold as much as I would like to improve everything. But we can't afford it. Money's going to be made elsewhere. Yeah, right then, had to pay much to go with. Okay. 35 gold. Right, all my vassals will be doing that soon. Yeah, I saw what he did, huh? Now I need 60 more gold. Bring me gifts. Of gold. And more. Convenient back scratches destroyed. Well, there's your current prominence now. Mahavihara is taking the lead as the most prominent monastery there is. When is the next time? Just to remind myself. Buddhist building, Buddhist building. Two years. So we got two years. That's going to be the first thing after the tour is over. Because basically we're raising funds for another large Buddhist building. At a 
among other things. Yes. Vikram is good enough. You, however, you are a problem. So try to sway him. Because he's going to be a troublemaker for this early part of my reign. Remember, 360 plus gold is what you need. Everyone has noticed how Prabhavati Gupta has been rather cheerful mood all day, yet no one seems to know why. Curious, I'm proud to ask what's going on. I'm shrug and smile. She tells me about a dream she had last night. I had a vision tonight that the world was ending, and the sky was falling, and the time was bending. I watched the heavens collide right before my eyes. What if the world dies at the sunrise? And yet you are so cheerful, I say, confused. It was a fun dream, she admits, as I decided to go over it and enjoy the many pleasures before the end happened. You are the garden hermit. You are a wise woman. But I say this. If that did happen, you should focus on Siddhartha, not hedonism. Say so she dreamed about apocalypse and enjoyed it. I find that rather distressing. Thank you. Perhaps she vacated the uh, position of... He passed away. What happened to him? Smallpox? Consumption? He looked healthy as an ox the last time I saw him. How did he get two diseases in one? And he just died just like that. He's 13. Pajabahu the second. Mind if I start learning a Tamil language? It's because it's one of those have tos. Priority. Let me see, let me see, let me see. You demand an artifact? Who asks? Brother. You want the prize ring. Brother, brother, brother. You don't ask someone to say, Hey, I want that prize ring. Don't you know that my father earned it? And it's going to be passed down for generations and generations to remind us of that? You don't do that. You are trouble, mister. Keep an eye on him. He may be compassionate and honest, but he's got ambitious plans in his mind. He's going to try to pull some strings. No, no, he wouldn't pull strings because he's too nice. But remember, please be patient. We will earn the gold. And we will go on that grand taxation tour. We're going to make a great fortune. And, and we'll... As I stated, be patient, because I am a patient man. That's why my stress levels been going down little by little. Of Cholo Samarajyam, 
child of the this to improve relations. They're no harm to us. There we go. We constructed a shrine there. And, uh. Oh, back when you were but a little child, I always cherish this day, says my mother. Bum, bum. Everything comes rushing back. I know that my mother held a deep devotion to me. And while my father, Rick Ramaba, who lived, he too loved me fiercely. It was he who heard my first words. He helped me take my first steps. He encouraged my mischief, my dressing up. I am too, it's too late to thank him, though. My gratitude only goes to Mother now. But she's 74. Ah, yes. A strong mother. She isn't as healthy as she used to be. Since I have no family of my own yet, I'll just say I love you so, Mother. So I'll have to respond. There's a chance that there's a possible outcome. She agrees with me or just wants something in, in return. Which it says uh, down there. We took the mysterious wine bottle in the nearby village to see if any of the locals knew about it. One of the elders, noble and poor eyesight, she says she knew about it. Specs the bottle and says my eyes may not see well, but I recognize some of this bottle. It is Shadow Banished Wine. Uh, after I ask her to elaborate, the elder explains that it's from a little girl. Grandfather told me an alchemist from generations ago who dabbled in alcohol making. Learned a legendary recipe to create a wine that provided one with the power to easily peer through the darkness such as night for a short time. Alas, the ingredients to make this wine are so rare, it only made a few bottles this one. Yep. That's what happened. Strong hook on me. Loyalty hook. Through my connections to the, uh, with the Indian elite, some of my realm, I managed to build up a good report, report within the community. Even commoners who shared similar ethnic origins as these elites, having migrated here from elsewhere along the Silk Road. Are thinking more highly of me than, than before. I have no doubt people who live in our homelands in South Asia have also heard good things about me and my family's rule over these lands. In the long run, this will surely benefit me politically and financially. I earn much honor and claim for my dynasty. Tiny bit of renown. Very good. Harold Free. The first high medieval innovation we got. Go for guilds. Because it unlocks all high medieval air economic buildings and additional building slots. More important to have more buildings within our culture. So that way we could use that to not only improve our income, but as well as eventually improve the size of our military, which is something that we can never really have time to improve with. I mean, I wish I own more of the domain, but decentralization works best. To a degree. One more month, and then we'll get going with the Grand Tour. Here it is. All but one. What are you doing? Where are you traveling to? He's on a pilgrimage. Pilgrimage to Anuradhapura. 
That's what this is. He'll be back soon. Just wait a few months. As long as nobody else travels. Battle of lost birds. A wounded, disillusioned mercenary group has arrived in the Rata of Malay. Inert locals claim to overheard talk of settling down after pillaging an easy target. Never gonna grow anxious. Tensions are high and conflict is likely to arise if I do not intervene in this matter. Ah, oh, hell. I gotta implore them to leave. 45% chance that, that that area over there gets looted. Or listen to the locals. 54% chance. Please leave. They ignore the please. Again, this doesn't affect me. It affects down there. It's your own damn fault. We're still waiting for that man to return from his pilgrimage to Anuradhapura. And when he gets back there, then I will begin the Grand Tour. Because I want everybody there. So that way I can earn more cash that way. Okay. There he is. He's present. Hopefully nobody else has moved out. Yes, everyone's present. Okay. Leaving on Christmas Eve, the day of these Christians observe. Okay, here we go. Dinner. Dinner with a bad man. My bad brother. And, uh... Well, actually, tour the grounds for once because there might be some control issues there. And I guess the same over there because there must be something going on in there that... Doesn't seem to be too pleasing. And uh, Vikrama. I guess dinner with him. It'll be nice. And of course, cultural festival with my two uh, vassals, especially those from the Tamil realm. Well, I don't know about him because, you know, he's not a Tamil, but I think it may affect the land, will it? The local culture rather than self. Uh, who knows? Just keep it that way. No increase of success. Okay. Get the Silk Road merchants. And then the other. Be safe. We'll be traveling slow. Slow travel means more time for Silk Road trade. Although, one minor adjustment of the routes. One minor adjustment because of landmarks. Yeah. Travel road deviation too large, 71 days over the maximum. Ah, oh, come on. You're not being fair to me. Because that's the university there. Well, what if I take a shortcut? Nope, too large. I know it will be a long time, but still. Oh, Chilo. Has your stewardship always been that bad? But he's a well-traveled man. The Serb's been with us for a long time. <laughs> Maybe I'll learn their language, too. And since I'm an unmarried man, I'm going to do something a bit different. <laughs> since I'm not a just character. Instead, we'll go for lechery. Well then, this often results in stress reduction or lustful characters. I'm not a lustful man, but if I can find some beautiful women with good traits, um, this is my chance here. And after this grand tour is over, then um, perhaps I'll 
If I don't find a beautiful woman or a smart woman or a strong woman during these travels, uh, <laughs> then uh, maybe we'll just find some suitable princess from another realm. And also look for those that might inherit counties so that way I may spread the dynasty to other parts of the world just to further increase our renown as it's been that way. So yeah, I will intend to embrace my carnal desires to seek sexual encounters with a plethora of partners. Which again, there's room for four wives. Any lucky lady that'd be willing to, you know, <laughs> again, we're doing this differently for this tour. In addition to money. Money, women, power. Three things that an average <laughs> uh, man wants. But keep in mind, you're a Buddhist, and a virtuous one, too. Let's begin. Vijay Ditya Chakravarti. Renounced Sokra Merchant of Marathi origin. Great. Craven man. So, yeah. We set off on Christmas. <laughs> For any of the St. Thomas Christians, Nestorians, uh, that live in Tamapani. We know there are historical accounts of that. <laughs> For those that observe. And of course, let's not forget that Momtir was formerly a Christian. But Orthodox Christian, they celebrate Christmas not on the 25th, but on the 6th or 7th. I forget which day it was. But he's a Buddhist now because he's basically one of us, in a way. So yeah, can't wait. Give me a moment. Alright. You may not like me, but you will learn to respect me. We're here for dinner. I'm have to have a good time. Good. Factions going away. Four tier tax levied. And again, my intent is lechery. Because there might be some lucky ladies that get to, you know. As Senia leans forward to pick up the trinket from uh, for the hallway, I turn. Uh, I in turn lean forward to get a good look into the fine muscles playing underneath the skin. You couldn't purchase that type of physique. Maybe if I surround myself with more of these fit individuals, I must simply must have her in my court. Well, she is strong, but it's not an inheritable trait. Plus. She's married to my cousin, Vikramabahu, who is the heir to Rohana for the south. Oh. Cell swords bolster recruitment. Yay. Also, I'm sure he, uh, Radla, who Avirada wouldn't mind, would he? What do you say? He addressed me directly. My well, age, I've been contemplating the matter. I've come to the conclusion that a favor here might be repaid with a, with a favor in the future. We cook on me. Oh, I don't want that. Yay! And uh, on second thought, never mind then. Again, not an inheritable trait. It is morning. I emerge reluctantly to the waking world as the morning sun pierces my vision. I see a servant shuffling awkwardly around my room. Unsteady sets my breakfast down beside me. 
Uh, that's what troubles him. It was such minimal provocation, he begins to find words for them. Oh, my wise and kind Agarada, these walls talk. Oh, what terrible things they say. I know so much, too much, I think, some days. Avirada of Matala would never forgive me, I told you. But I can't just keep these secrets in my head anymore. The witch secret. Witchcraft is shunned around here. You must tell me at once. Oh, he's suspicious of me. Oh dear. Again, please pay tribute to the Agarada, raising funds for the next Buddhist temple building that we plan on building. And among other things. The irrigation tanks even. Continued support of the Sangha. He's a godless planner. Time for a tribute. Will you pay? You have defied the authority of the Crown and refused to submit to my demands. That is a crime. That can't be good, because that means more chances to join certain factions, unless they have a favor from me, which there is none. So I'm going up the hill to, um, you know, the other place where my brother lives. My unruly brother. Oh, you son of a... So my entourage comes halt to the gates of uh, Senkada Galapura. The calls made for Appa Mahasena of oh, my uh, they receive me, but after a time, it's more than generous. Not even a lowly servant appears to greet me. The calls were made many times before, but we see no answers save for the chirps of wild birds and the most of gentle winds. It's become clear that he's been turning away the gates, and a worthless rat motto has in doing so has insulted the crown. You're part of this too. I'm talking to you down there. You're part of this too. Righteous empath. That's because he's ambitious. He could have just let me in, but clearly in his subconscious he wants my throne. The said salts will not soon be forgotten. I was to have a nice simple dinner, but we didn't get that here. It's one thing to uh, refuse to pay tribute to me. It's another to shut the gates right in front of me. But again, traveling safe. Just travel slowly but surely across the country, like everything is normal. Now, what does the ruler of Rohana think of me? Will he let me in? Alright, uncle. You were one of the good men. You are the righteous one. A zealous paragon. Yes. Whatever control issues you have over there, I'm willing to uh, help you out with that. Nothing much is happening here, other than tax, 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 become more avaricious. With my hunting bow on my side, a member of my party alerts me with the presence of a stag just below an embankment in our location, saying that the edge of the cliff I should be able to pierce its heart. For a skilled hunter such as I, it should be easy, but not without risk. The ground appears a little unsteady, but with careful footing I should be able to slay the beast without issue. 50% chance that I get it, and 60 renown, 50% chance that I get wounded. My uh, prowess skill is 12, which is average, so basically 50-50. My footing proves truer, my aim ever truer, as I fell the beast of the single while without so much stumbling over the precarious paths. The hunting party seems oppressed. The ground's filled with applause of my fellows. 
my host, Morgan of Rohana, personally comes to congratulate me on my kill. And with that business concluded, I throw my kill with the rest to continue my tour to the grounds. For the dynasty. I shoot tax. Now, you should pay tribute because you are the righteous one. Thank you very much. I'll be on our way to, uh... Is it Kalana or is it Kalamba is what you point out? There's nothing in Kalamba. Recently looted. That's why we're coming to you, because apparently you're having control issues here. Fourteen and ill and wheezing. He was born with wheezing. But hey, at least he's a, just as virtuous as I am. And he's going for learning. Well, I hope he learns well, so that way he'll be one of the most virtuous Buddhist rulers we have. 53% chance of but no, we have to stick to the initial agreement, even if we earn less. You're traveling across a little dangerous country here. Be careful. Hold it right there. While we were traveling, did the activity log pop up during the last few? Whoa! <laughs> Oh, that's a heck of a tax, because I was wondering, it's like, 800, that's not cool. We taxed big time on these areas ever since we left there. We'll be arriving the 8th of November in Paduka. What do you say, boy? Willing to tour your grounds. Hello, cousin. Be careful, this is jungle, well, it's forest, to be exact. Forest mixed in with jungle, that's what the land of Lanka is like. And this part of it. Bazfa Ladu Vijayabahu has been quite a gracious host so far, showing me his lands and possessions with pride. So I'm immediately taken aback when he starts stammering and clear trying to draw my attention away from an apparently rem unremarkable door we're passing by. Are you hiding something from me, Vijayabahu? I take advantage of this moment of stun. Shameful, guilty. Silence pushes the door open. I'm surprised what I find. A deposit of food, gold pieces, and general goods. Oh, I firmly believe, I think he's just being generous here. Okay. It's only fair to share this with you, Argarada. You are a generous person. You'll be willing to, to pay them to me. I don't want to be excessive with it. Because you'll feel insulted and may not like me. And also, we'll join in faction. So I'm a fair man. Not to mention, we'll be chat taxing on chickens! Five. All right, time to pay tribute. I think you'll probably refuse because of what I just did to you. Nope, he gave in. Good boy. 
27th of March that will be at the next place. Have we seen that massive tree before? I swear we're going in circles, my caravan master. Are you my caravan master? No, you're not. You're the Silk Road trader. Perhaps he's right. We see no sign of getting out of this forest in hours. Are we still even in Columba? The dense tree cover makes it impossible to tell the time of the day or even the direction we're heading. In this way, we'll never make it to Anuradhapura. Jeez. Search for a guide to hire, which is you recruit this person who is paranoid, dumbness, greedy. Mm -hmm. I'll say I know exactly where we are. In which comes which comes to the question for any of you: Can a man get lost in his own country? Is that even possible? I find the correct path. Danger experience gain. Keep looking. Twenty-seven of March. Entering to the Vani, the open plains of northern Tambapani. As we traverse through the, you know, the grasslands, uh, trudging way through the dirt, we encountered a modest wayward shrine, neatly carved. It sports a Dharma chakra at its head and below. What are the words? Here lies Saint Kitu, uh, Kituka of Rajavarama, last daughter of Rajanganya. It seems the local spirit figures being patronized these parts, not once sanctioned by the Theravada Sangha. Uh, my uncle will likes me well enough. Cast down this thing. Time for a banquet. It's a it's a rare opportunity to join us of a good company of the son of House of Jayabahu. This is my uncle. Surprise, Momchilo made a friend. Unless I've been missing out uh, on who's friends of who and who's rivals of who. That's my mother. Yeah, my mother passed away, old age, 76, been around since the beginning of this series, basically, regarding age. It seems I'm not only the honored guest of Vikrama's court. This evening I've sat beside a fascinating uh, Tisarakita, and our conversations left me feeling most elated. I am well versed in statescraft, but my skills being wasted as I wander from place to place. If you have me at your court, an honor to be call you my Agarada. It is rare to find such a fascinating person without a home of their own. But is there room for my cold mirror? Comely. Finally, a pretty face for once. Oh, you could definitely help me out here. Of course there is. So she'll join. And perhaps future spouse.
The meal this evening has been the die for, but as chefs keep following the food, I have noticed my Rajpuruhit um, Sigaradisa. It's been scarcely touching what little he puts on his plate. I don't know, he's been traveling with me. A little lack of appetite we would be fine for any other time. Vikrama, Uncle Vikram. Seems to be getting insulted a member of my aunt, so I'm just picking a poking at their dish. Eat something for Siddhartha's sake. Convince them to eat. Now it's time for a tribute. I sat at the dinner table waiting for my dessert when it finally arrives. I can scarce contain my impatience. I cannot hold back any longer as I just erupt to an uncontrollable laughter as these two wobbling orbs of dessert dropped in front of me. Topped with two fruity nipples. There are all manner of lewd details on this confection that I'm sure would even make Mara blush. Of course I love it. The only question is how can I best show appreciation? You're telling me this as a married, uh, as an unmarried man. Well, Uncle, I'll remember this. <laughs> we'll arrive um, to there in Fourth of July. Go into Tamil country now. Tamil land, uh, part of of uh, Tamilani cultural festival. Although my attempt is still lechery, and I still haven't found a real good-looking woman in my sight, or someone skilled, and talented, and long. Perhaps you'll find them here. Streets hanging with tapestries. Ah, the smell of freshly cooked pork. And the way Vani shines during this time of the year. A bonfire has been lit in the center of the town to celebrate the victory of the brightest of stars. Ascending it to heaven above. Amid the reveling and drinking of Salma, one of the locals start a song that all join into. Summer has arrived. Loudly sing, pigeon. The seed is growing and the meadow is booming. Sing, seagull. Such a lovely celebration, I say. There's no need for the stress drop because I ain't got any. I follow my vessel as he shows me way around the vessel. And now, he announces, as we enter the castle grounds, what I expect to be a pleasant surprise. I raise my eyebrows when we find a marvelous fountain, all in white stones, of a silver pipe uh, copiously running with clear wine. Some people got around it, laughing and throwing coins in the well. <laughs> Let's all drink together. Nothing much going on here, so I guess it's time for you to pay tribute. Hey, uh, and 5th of October, we'll be up there in Nagadipa, which apparently it's held by a, uh, a Sinhalese man rather than Tamil, so what does that mean? No, it still affects the local Tamil culture there. Even though you're Sahala and Theravada. I guess that means... We used to have that Tamil Hindu ruler there, but I guess... I'm not saying they died out. It's just perhaps the dynasty did die out and did marry somebody who's of the Mihidala dynasty, which is from Matale. He's 16, you're just a young man. But I'm glad that we're earning this much gold. Acrobats jump in colorful tires. One of them opens his mouth to catch a ball that another one throws on him. 
public erupts into cheers. The music soon follows. I've heard this song before, perhaps. Most of them sound too similar. Even from the days I could hear the peasants uh, loudly sing along and dance in the fields of woof, woof, woof. I figured to decide to join in, stealing the juggling balls. Get that dog! I can take it back with me. It's nice to have a little pet dog. As I pet the dog on her head as she happily wags her tail, what name would suit her? Sort of historical, sort of glued to her black fur. It's an important decision. As the dog rolls over, let me pet her stomach. I find a silk strangle. The way down the road, name her Shadow. What a great name. Sixty-three gold. Did you see what I just saw? Mom Chilo's got a lover. Oh. And you finally learned our tongue. Are you sure? This is became friends or lovers? Itaka. You used to be married to this boy? Well, uh, <laughs> what say you married to uh, Momchil since you two are lovers now? Which I know, apparently. There's no secret between you two. I'm doing this simply for the sake of it. Eh? <laughs> it's for role-playing reasons. Oh, I think two should be married. Serbski Sihala. Several Sihala. Yes. Again, did it simply for the sake of it. Plus, I would hate that caravan master of mine to pick up the, you know, the fornicator trait. Now, time for a tribute. As the people knock at the bus, starts to wander. Around the wooden stage, a thought comes on. Such a large group of people, while all wanting to join a remarkably library spectacle for free. What a waste. If I stand by the entrance, I'm sure I can demand a small pill for this. After all, it is in my arm. They owe me for this. On our way home now. So. The court physician of ours died of pneumonia. First things first. When we get home, get a court physician. Bank! Shuffle the supplies around. I guess my attempt at lechery failed. I guess I have to be lost because it's either that or it's just not the buck. Oh well, I guess I'll find out. Lucky woman somewhere else. Somewhere nearby. Hundred and fifty renown for this. Magnificent liege. They all pay me well. And of course there are those who did not pay a tribute. And there's gonna be hell to pay. But first things first. Build a local Buddhist religious site. You know Give me the stupor for once. The stupor can enhance a man's other side skin and house valuable relics. It's an equal amount of hiding prestige. Stupas are used to house various Buddhist religious objects such as copies of scriptures. Votive offerings, jewelry, Buddha statues, and even relics of famous deceased victims. The larger the stupa, the more objects in its treasury. 
the powerful, well, the more powerful the spiritual power is. We have found an excellent location for a new stupa, which will stand tall and proud soon enough. Additionally, as I gather resources and people to assist me with this endeavor, I need a clear plan on what to do. For example, I discuss with local bankers whether the structure will be added to an existing religious complex or to stand on its own somewhere else. Also, I need to choose how large this building will be. Once that's decided, the construction gets started. It'll be large in size, of course. And while you're at it, construct the irrigation tanks. It'll be grand. It'll help with the prominence of Mahavihara. Anything else? I established a trade route, even though my uh, I got excellent stewardship education. So hopefully, I get a very good one. We'll take a risk of that policy. I get a court decision for goodness' sakes. There's a nearby tournament, which obviously it's too far away, but it can't hurt to, you know, improve your prowess. Start this training. Then you turn to the right, uh, uh, I guess somebody else, while dealing a powerful blow to my sword. That makes you take a couple steps back. They won't go gentle on you in the tournament, huh? so it's says trying to sweat his sword. If you want to win, you can't afford to lose. Not even to me. Not even once. Ah. So, this is a permanent increase. Yes. Bit by bit, it'll help you. Trust yourself. Think. Ah, yes, the relic veneration. What first? Pilgrimage Street Prada. Every little bit helps. For the lifestyle experience. A car look. Huh. Sucker much. Street Prada. You people know the drill of how this works. Let him eat it. Ah, oh, crud, it's my brother. Hopefully he doesn't become much of a malcontent. I noticed that, uh, Gundavide, uh, Gundavide avoids him more than usual. He always sits at the hospital end of the table when I'm invited to a feast. And consistently refuses my company while we're camping. We don't have the best relationships, but that attitude is starting to tire me. Especially when I overhear him defame me. Gajaba was good to I'd be way better on rather than him. Well, we can't get rid of him. He's a uh, sober much. We might need him. Momchi, I'll take care of him. This road has gone incredibly hilly the past few hours, and everyone's beginning to wear. Wow, after a while, after a while longer, with no end of the hills in sight. One of my Charlie companions from Chill approaches me and says, Lord, our mounts cannot carry on like this for much longer. The poor animals need a break or I fear they'll collapse. We must put a stop to the rest. He knows full well this would delay our journey. This one would be wise to rest. Plus, small chances of getting Silk Road trades as we wait. Oh crud, I forgot to wait for a physician, and we're traveling without a physician. What's the matter of you? Okay. Excellent. 
She's a what? An Orion Kai. Eurasian step. Siberian Turkic. Oh. Far away from here. Siberian Turkic. Annette Kacha is her name. Her health is fine. Widely known in scholarly circles. Dupe. She'll be treating those over there, but not with this entourage. She didn't join because I was just too. want to get it over with. That sort of feeling. Oh, Lord. I am Vera Bahu of Barodula. That is an albino. I'll guard. And then there's me. You might be less fun after I win. He wins the fight. Every entourage will lose respect for me. Hey, I'm trying to be like my father, you know. In a way. And they'll be waiting for more guests that's to join. Ah, uh, here we go again. Another faction just came up. Because there are some people who are a bit unruly. We try to make them swear for it all, but none answer the call. Except one. The good Tamil Buddhist is the one who answered. See that man? I will climb it. You know how this works. You've seen this before in past videos. We're simply doing that because it's for the Sangha. I'll take my time not to overexert myself because I'm a patient man. Ah, yeah. Donate a great amount. Because you have to. See that man? I did climb it. See, now I have that pilgrim trait. Now let us go back. Significant success. My attempt to establish a trade on my domains brought many merchants to my counties and a profitable, sizable commercial network has been established. Good. For the next 20 years, busy trade route. So there's minor, significant, busy, major, or rich. So you're right in the middle. All right. Good. See the current amount we're making right now up there with the income? Just wait till I become avaricious. Coincidence. We just happened to stop by a certain village in Vijayaraja Pura, uh, right when the locals were holding a wedding between the two of the great clans living here. The bride is beautiful and graceful in her traditional Sihala wedding clothes, while the groom is just as handsome and charming. More importantly, this is just the start of a huge and lively feast of epic proportions, and the locals have invited for us to join in. There is plenty of food and drink to go around for everyone, even strangers, they say. And the festivities will likely last several days. That reminds me, that's a thing I have not done in this series. A grand wedding. I'm still unmarried. I should hold a grand wedding with some noble princess from somewhere. I need that to make that happen. I'll take the prestige hit. Sounds like a fun occasion. Why not? Just as when we're about to go home. So we'll make a stop here. And to continue on. But again, I'll do that grand wedding of whomever I'm going to get married to. Because how old am I now? Give me a moment. 
I'm 32 years old, still not yet married. I mean, I'm kind of a bit overdue to be married, but I want to do one more thing. We'll do the grand wedding thing in the next episode. I'm actually cutting this episode a bit short. Now, the relic veneration of Tamapani is another. Do it for the Mahavihara, the sacred Bodhi tree in Anuradhapura. Oh, and, uh, yes, through here so we could go visit that lowly university to get us some stewardship lifestyle experience. And, of course, bring the dang merchants with you. Even though you're still spending quite a bit, but I... But I think you should disregard. Cut the cost. No. Travel TV is too large. Okay, hang on. Fine. Be that way. In this case... Travel log. There you go. And someone special. You're someone special in your village, so... Why not make people know on your travels? Just to increase piety, because I have the consecrated blood trait. That's the reason why. To the Bodhi tree. Because I am someone special, someone pious. Now I have the traveler trait, since you've been traveling quite a lot. That reminds me, there's actually one more activity that I want to do before, uh, as I said, cut this episode short. And that is Ancestor Veneration. I just really want to get my travel on. Uncle, you did your... Buddhist land grants. Uh, uncle, again. You returned a favor. Thank you for the entertainers. Again, you know the drill, how this works. You've seen it in past episodes. There's no need for me to... No need for me to read the texts all over. I just simply want to increase the province of Mahavihara so we can eventually get it up to 900, which is a goal to unite the Sangha. And once we do that end of that struggle, that's when I will end that series officially. That's the first and only major goal. It's not about territory, because I'm basically doing the complete opposite of all of my past series I've done. Like veneration. 300 now for Mahavihara. And it's going to jump up a bit more as soon as that stupa is finished. And quite a patron to it. Journey through them, but I pass my peculiar looking tent split over its more peculiar looking occupant side. Come in, old mighty Agarada. I can tell you many miles traveled to go. I should get to send you a reading. I'll offer you a reading of your future trials for modest price. What do you tell me our future? Bad omen, you say. Sell title decision. One more, then I'll be. Avaricious. Uh, we stayed on the road slightly too long and the sun's been starting to dip below the horizon. Out of the surrounding terrain starts to merge and form into angry looking armed figures. This area is a role that has a toll. Pay up. Says the biggest and frankly ugliest of the bunch. Aradapura Momchilo steps forward, weapon raised, and looks in your direction. Well, he's a stupid man here. Oh, 
Oh, I could intimidate. Souls over peasants and I'm a Agarada. So 6% chance that they'll be intimidated let it pass. 39% chance to start to fire away through and Mulchia will get wounded. Pass through. Thanks, Siddhartha. I can go inside again. Not quite yet. Wait next month. Damn, we're already halfway there towards accumulation. You people have been doing good work. Not to mention, you've all been building different kinds of Buddhist buildings, which is what also increases the problems for all of them. Still 300. And don't forget the yearly thing. Sometimes it increases, sometimes it decreases. Now, the sell titles decision. What is that? Sell trivial titles. Exchange prestige for gold. Selling titles yields unpredictable results. So basically, this is just in case of emergency. If you go into debt, this is one of the ways. And of course, just in case of emergency, purify the Sangha. <laughs> which again, you could choose any of those options. Uh, which can increase the amount of gold you gain for doing that. And you would earn a lot more if you weren't a Buddhist. Well, I could probably do that and get away with it. I mean, yeah, it does decrease prominence. But... Six, seven, one, in fact, less. You know, I wouldn't do that. So, again, 300 prominence. 900 is the goal. So, 600 more to go. So, again, we're still quite a long way. Which is why it's going to take a, at least a century more before we see the official end of this uh, video series when we unite the Sangha. And of course, after the end of that series, that means Legacy of Persia. And then, and it's likely that the next series will be set somewhere in the Iranian world. That's my intent, but don't give me suggestions on who I should play as. I'll figure it out for myself. But now, anyways, one more activity that I want to do. Host an Ancestor Veneration Ceremony. Do a sacred ceremony for once. So let's travel log and someone special. Obvious is obvious. And plus, gain a bit more renown. Let's go make these offerings now and do it for the ancestors. It is nightfall and Damatan was hard at work when we arrived at the cereal field south of Ajay of Rajapura. It appears she's finding crops at a rapid pace using a large flat piece of wood and heavy stones. I frown as I watch the one performing her labor, then the requires what exact she's up to. She winces and it starts a long rant about how we all need to wake up and meet our true mess instead of hiding behind false Buddhist teachings. We'll take a few steps back in surprise. We're on our way to go venerate the ancestors. You loony. But I'm a calm, patient, honest man. So I'll just say, oh, I'm alright. I'm not zealous. Not that zealous. Well, uh, you gotta respect the Sangha. My dog will join me. <laughs> Good girl.
the grotto emerges from the vegetation like a stone arch of cathedral. On its uh, entry, there is a small wooded table and a stall. Someone's left a lantern uh, burning on. Careful, my liege. Won't you hold his arm up in front of the chest? There are banners in this area. In these lines. You're quick to make accusations, a dimly illuminated figure stands yeah, in the entrance of the cave. I'm merely a hermit, and you must be the Agarada. Damika, a giant mystic of a woman. Huh. Well, how fortunate. Please tell me about my future. Hermit takes a second before replying. She gets up and waits till I follow. Some herbs are scattered around in what seems to be a rudimentary bed. She turns to me when we're way from my entourage and with an oddly deeper voice replies, You shall find that who seeks. How insightful. The jungle here are swarming with tiny dark blood sucking insects. No matter what we do or where we go, they are there, leeching our blood like a torturous cloud sent by Mara himself. Not only are the horses getting flighty and temperamental, but my entire as well. Especially my Radhaputa, Momchilo, who is fiercely flaying his sangled covered arms. Push through, they're mere insects. 75% chance that we get drained by mosquitoes for everybody. Of course that happened. You're in the jungle, baby. Cousin and fellow kinsman and friend. We all have to respect our ancestors. There we go. Well, and again, he's seen that text before from a previous episode. Gain 18 renown. Okay, not as good as the last time. But, oh well. Now let's go back. There we go, the stupa is complete. In prominence, 25 for my bar and 20 for the two others. There we go. Yikes. As we're walking among the hills late in the day, the darkness comes suddenly, brought by the dark clouds above us. Then there is a distant loud rumble of thunder. Soon there is another, combined with a dazing flash of lightning. And another strike brightly illuminated the area where the after image burned in my eyes. I blinked to see where the lightning had struck. Now there is a quickly expanding brush fire and spreading towards us. Run! We ran away from the fire this time. Long last, I'm finally home. There go. Now, I'm curious. How much does a grand wedding cost? It's in the middle. Again, it's something I need to look into. Like, say, I have a grand wedding for someone of the Pandya dynasty. If you... Okay, never mind. We also had good relations with Chara. Again, most of these women are... You're not married? Oh, that's rather surprising. Okay. Now, look at here. No? Is here. Yes, you're the daughter of, but... Why? Oh, wait a minute. You're a hostage. A hostage to the Pandya. The alternative would be to romance her and then to elope. But I'm trying to learn Tamil. Ok, 
Okay, well, what about Chuck? Is, is he having another one of those grand tours? Yeah, he's visiting vassals. Most of them are betrothed. Okay, now look at here. So, grad wedding. That's her. I mean, to maintain the alliance between us and Andra would be excellent. But again, it would be betrothal, and then when she turns 16 or so. Or try other alternatives. Of course, our old friends, Pagan. Don't I remember you? I remember this man. We put him there. By faction demand. And then... Uh, I believe we fought a war for that. And then... Hang on, hang on. I really want to know the history of this person. To go back in time. So... Yes, it was this man. We put him on the throne. And then one year later, by faction demand, they put her back on the throne. And then there was another in a dethronement war. But um, she succeeded. And since that time, and she even went to the university at Gaia. So, yeah, we did fought a war against her way back when, but now, uh, <laughs> well, it's like, yeah, we fought against her in the intervention, and then, um, yeah, she's still there after all this time, even though she's clearly not a good person. No. No, no, no. Now, who's your, uh, Although we have also always had good relations with those from Kandras. Hostage. I saw that. Is a hostage. So therefore we can't get him. Uh, some of you are lucky. And of course our those are too young. Think about other ones within my half sister. She's due to inherit all this up there, yes. Although, don't marry her, but that's my half sister. Don't want that inbred stuff. <laughs> Man, you just stammered words at this point. They've had issues of Bama Power. Paula, we have no issues with fellow Buddhist country, but not Theravada. Okay, now I'm just looking, doing research on who you should be betrothed to of any nearby relevant areas. Hostage. Robust. Crud. Now this woman here, I would love to romance and uh, and uh, elope. And of course, there's still some Kalyani Chalukya. Just plain absurd. <laughs> How does this area maintain its independence?
Look, if I try any murder plots to, you know, like say, uh, get rid of this person, that's not a good idea, because you know why? That goes against my honesty. Even though it seems he's not well popular. I mean, there's only one predicted agent. You're willing to get rid of him? Black sheep of the house. Paranoid, sadistic, shy. Oh, that's, that's a reason why. But that's also hard because, one, he's paranoid. He'll know the scheme. And then also shy makes it less likely. all these hostage things well then again there is you you are a sister of um yeah black ship of the noble house I think we found our candidate plus excellent diplomacy I mean of course they'll accept that okay we found our person, which we don't need a betrothal, but you got to have, you got to hold a grand wedding within three years, and it's going to cost you a lot of money for this, so I'm willing to arrange that proposal, so it'll be her, and I'll think about some of the other women I know of that I would be willing to, you know, <laughs> elope with. Once I'm done learning Tamil, which reminds me, you're gonna need this. No wonder why it's taking you so damn long. Now, just wait for it. There's our minds, even though it's to a lesser county. Plus, only daughter, old woman, old man. Even though she's going to be going off to rule the country soon, that means I'll spread my dynasty over there as well. You made a good choice, after all. Now, please, hang on here. So now, how much does this cost? Look, I'm not going to hit it right now. This is my capital. 548. Increased opinion gain. Renown and prestige. That's what I want. Renown and prestige. So that's 908. Obviously. Increased health bonuses. Lessening that. Decreased up any doo-doo on that. Decreased prestige gain. For less entertainment. Cost reduction. So I can use the spare money. Because perhaps after the wedding. Go on a pilgrimage. Or go visit some far off realm. And bring the Silk Road Merchants of you. And make some cash. So, there's an idea here. So again, I just wanted to show you what that potential plan is going to look like. So, we'll do that grand wedding thing in the next episode. <laughs> so it took me a while to figure out who would be more suited for this. And then once we're done with that, <laughs> oh boy, it's going to be uh, a grand wedding. Although she and her family still has to come over by sea, which is rather dangerous. So we'll just hope all things will go well. So, we'll see you in the next episode, but until then, so long for now.